leprosy, a disease as old as civilization. It's a disease which ideally should not exist by now because we have all the tools that are required to make sure that this disease does not exist anymore. Still wreaking havoc in the lives of many. If you see my foot here, there is a plastic inside, both legs. I was in wheelchair for six months without walking. Declared an eliminated disease years ago. Cases of leprosy are emerging again in Ghana. In 2018, over the year, we had 276 new cases. In 2019, over the whole year, we had two, uh, 279 new cases. This year, when you check our DIMS reports from the various regions, the reports we've received, between January and February, we have 17 new cases. Spreading through continuous contact. But it is not all doom and gloom. If you come and say, look, I've got leprosy and they give you the medicine, within six months you're cured. Not to be hidden away. In the olden days, you hid people away with leprosy. Sadly, the associated stigma makes this difficult for many. A lot of people, because of the stigma, uh, will hide and will not go in for the necessary tests and will not come first. That is, is the problem. And so it gets too late yeah. to, to stop the disability and all of that. But stigma isn't the only reason for this. It falls under the neglected tropical diseases. And because it falls on that, a lot of attention is not placed uh, on that. You find malaria, TB, HIV, maternal and newborn issues taking the center stage. But a case like leprosy is least spoken about. So if people even have the disease, they are even not aware. And because the disease is also silent, it's, it's a painless disease, people take it as normal. Leprosy is neglected tropical disease caused by the slow-growing bacterium called Mycobacterium leprae that causes and spreads the disease when someone with an active case sneezes or coughs. Treatment of the disease has been available since 1995, but the condition keeps destroying lives and livelihoods around Ghana. My name is Seth Kwame Boatin, and in this documentary, I explore the issues around the spread of the disease in Ghana and why you must be concerned. In the Laura municipality, which is about 85 kilometers from Wa, there are cases like that. Forty-one year old Swansa Sakura is one of the many cases here. He lived in Techiman Tuabodom in the Bono East region. That was when he started showing symptoms. He was then 35 years and he had to return to Laura. Swansa Sakura didn't have an idea what leprosy was. I never knew of this condition before. It is when I had it 
that people came close to me and told me that I'm suffering from leprosy. And that really brought me home from um, Tobedom, the Kichiman municipality, to my hometown to seek treatment. Even when Sakura returned to his hometown, he had no knowledge of the exact place to receive leprosy treatment. It was by sheer luck Sakura got spotted by the Laura Municipal Disease Control Officer, Robert Sala, one day. I was going to work. So when I got to the village, I saw them doing the CWC session. I said, okay, let me get there and see how they are doing. So I got there and I saw him. I said, ah, what about this one? Have we seen this case? They said, all the time they have been seeing him. And they were advising him that he should come to the hospital. He's not coming. And there that I based on, I said, okay, uh, I'm going to work. I want to come on Monday that he should come and see me. So on Monday, he didn't come. I picked my motorbike from the office to the house. I want to pick him. I want to pick the, 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 his pictures. And I send the pictures to my boss mm. at the regional level. The disfigurement that had started on his face was what caught Robert's attention. If you see the, the way the, 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 around this area, the way it is, it was just very bad. Mm. Very, very, very bad with the ears. Even the, the, the soles, they were crack, crack like that. Cannot wear any, any sandals. Mm. Uh -huh. So I just, that's, that's what, is, what impressed me. I said, no, 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 let me follow up this case. Sakura is not the only person in his family with leprosy. He has an auntie with the condition and in fact, his father also died from leprosy related complications. I meet another person whose disability has just started. He is called Ayel Zubanuma and he's 27 years. Health officials here have adopted a strategy to help identify persons with leprosy. Gordon Tuara, the Upper West Region Leprosy Coordinator, tells us more. Now, case searches are ongoing in some particular districts, and we basically concentrate on the passive reporting. Health workers' capacity building, though not enough, has also made us to be able to really get most of the cases at hand in the community. <laughs> It is through this case search that they discovered this 45-year-old woman who had had leprosy, but the disability had not set in. She was an active case, meaning she stood the chance of spreading the disease. And indeed, she passed it on to two of her children. One of them is this 15-year-old boy, Simon Zumababola. He still have the red patches on his face. Leprosy is no respecter of age. The biggest concern of health professionals in leprosy care is the number of children like Simon contracting it in recent times. What we find as a challenge is the proportion which are children. Because that means that they got the disease recently. We don't want to see a lot of that. So in 2018, we had uh, seven children diagnosed. In 2019, we had 12 children diagnosed. 
This year so far we've had one child diagnosed. Back to Simon. Luckily for his friends, Simon cannot pass on the disease to them because he has started treatment. Studies suggest a person is not contagious within a few days of starting the treatment with antibiotics. The treatment must be completed as prescribed and this can take up to two years to make sure there is no relapse in the infection. Comparing some districts that were not um, well built in terms of capacity, within the shortest possible time, um, capacity building training went and cascaded down to the uh, frontline workers. We realized all those um, uh, chiefs compounds, all those silent districts started reporting. So we think it will go down well with us if awareness is really still heightened and then the capacity building with the, uh, the health workers is well done and we shouldn't have missed opportunities of clients passing through the clinicians' hands at the hospitals before they are then caught in their foot. It's very worrisome. So I believe if such areas are well tackled, all these cases can be fetched. And from this explanation by Dr. Kwao, it appears transmission of the disease is very easy. When the person has um, a forceful uh, uh, expulsion from, let's say, the respiratory tract, little particles like droplets are released carrying the organism. And when they enter someone's respiratory system, mouth, or even mucous membranes like the face, you know, they can get transmitted to that uh, person. So with droplet transmission, you're talking about coughing, sneezing, shouting, singing. They all let out these droplets, which can then be passed on to somebody else. And then if the right situation is an infection, and then disease would follow. Early recognition of the symptoms is also key in the fight against leprosy. According to Dr. Kwao, these signs must not be taken lightly. Usually, it is a silent patch. It doesn't pain, it doesn't itch. It is just that you have an area which is not, which is lighter than the rest of your normal skin. Sometimes you may have nodules thickening of the skin, but usually it starts from the skin and it's a patch. The patch, because it's a chronic disease, may take a long time not show any sign. Then you may see a second one, then you may see other ones. You may apply some creams on it, seems to be going down only to come up again. It's always there. And then with time, when it starts damaging the nerves significantly, you may now start feeling some of the nerve symptoms. So somebody will say, oh, I have numbness in my hands, numbness in my feet. I feel tingling in my legs. In the central region, we joined Dr. Benedict Kwao and his team of experts in their case tracing mission. And this took us to a community called Ismanjura in the Bremane Sikuma district. There, we met this 64-year-old traditional birth attendant, Abena Ahima. She has lived in this community for over 40 years. Abena has symptoms of leprosy, but she's not aware what it is. There's a past injury. Mm -hmm. Well, it is not surprising that Abna Hima is not aware what she is battling with is leprosy. Dr. John Amuasi shockingly reveals just a few health professionals are able to even identify its symptoms and go ahead to treat. For sure, uh, medical doctors and nurses have been trained in leprosy. It's taught in the medical schools, in the nursing schools, midwifery schools, and in the allied health schools. 
But the question is, you may be taught something, but if it's not something you come into contact with on a regular basis, you will see it and you will not see it. Mm. All right? So because it's a disease that is not so common compared to other infectious diseases like malaria and typhoid and other non-communicable diseases like the hypertension and the other cardiovascular diseases, um, it won't be the first point of call. In fact, um, most people will see it and think it is what we call um, tinea versicolor or, or this disease that is caused by the, the fungus on the skin because it presents exactly the same way. Back to Abena, Dr. Kwao and his team have identified some signs of leprosy. So they go ahead to examine her. The thing is that if you lose sensation, when you get injured, it means, or when you are likely to get injured, you cannot withdraw your feet to protect you from Because you don't injury, feel anything. Because you don't feel. So I'm going to test to see whether there are any areas without that protective sensation. So I'll test at the tips here and then along the side. What's in car? So this area Hi. Hi. So you realize that the three there was no sensation. It means that she can easily get injured. Here. Uh -huh. So you understand why she has this ulcer here, because she can't feel here, 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 and here. So that protective sensation here is not there. He then moves to her hand. And in this case, she's lost the protective sensation on the hands. That's why she has this burn injury. She'll tell you that when she had it, she didn't feel the, but she realized that there was blisters there. Yes, what they guessed is right. She has leprosy and has come into contact with many people here because of her job as a traditional birth attendant. We are suspecting to have leprosy. Has got very dry souls. And we know that when you lose those nerves that cause sweating, your souls can get very dry and the, the, they can crack easily and form wounds ulcers. So you can see just by looking at her feet that it's very dry. If, if you touch it, you, it's, you feel it. Aside from the lack of sensation in her palm, fingertips and some parts of her feet, there are also visible patches on her face and some part of her body. There is also evidence of nerve enlargement. So she can get the ulcer again because this area is not protected. The, the skin is, the, the soul is dry. It can get infected, it can affect the bones. The ulcer will continue, it won't heal. It can actually get much worse than this. Our eyes are becoming wider open. We're seeing better. And the truth is that if you look you, you will see, you will find. So we, we are looking for more, so we are seeing more. And once we find somebody who has it, they have it for a long time. So if you come back five years later, 10 years later, they'll be there with their leprosy. Mm -hmm. And the few that have had it in addition would add on. But truth be told, the number of leprosy cases globally has reduced drastically. Mm -hmm. But we still consider this unacceptable because it really should not exist. The health staff visiting this community speak in harshed tones about a family of three, all of whom have the condition. A family of three is inflicted and it has caused serious pain in the family. They live in abject poverty. I'm here to interact with them and my first meeting is with their mother. Ma'am, now I want to say, why? She is called Abena Donko and she is 77 years. Neither Abna nor her husband battled leprosy. Rather, three of her children, Doris Ishan, Frank Ishan, and Rollins Ishan. I'm a bad person. 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 I'm a
No, I ain't a and then you also took or the two or the two and all the other crap. Fusu, Uncle Fulufu. Ah, ye, Tears roll up in the eyes of the 77 year old woman any time she sees them. The leprosy has cost Doris 35 years Frank, 31 years, and Rollins, 21 years, to lose all their toes and has left them with serious gaping wounds and ulcers. They are so serious that they emit extremely offensive odor and invite swarms of flies. Not even the bandages covering the wounds could stop the flies. <laughs> Anthony Yawata, an enrolled nurse in the Nguyen Sap district, first identified this family in one of their case search rounds. That was 11th December 2019. When we came, the state of the author was something that I can't describe. Describe, try and describe yeah. to me. How, how, how were they looking? It was very offensive, discharging, slug everywhere. Pungent smell, something like a rotten egg. From there, we were informed to start to start management. That is wound dressing. So we started dressing three days, every three days, every three days, every three days. Up to now. Before that, were they not dressing it? Did they? They were not dressing it. They were using herbs. They just get some leaves here and there, put them together, then cover it with it. Mm. Sadly, all the three have developed various mental illnesses. The Amada is not only worried about the disability leprosy has caused the family, but also the stigma from the community. Oh, it is not surprising this woman and her family wish to move out of this place. They all live in a small mad house with holes in the roof. With no mat or no mattress, one of the daughters, Doris, spreads a piece of cloth on the dusty floor and sleeps. In Ghana today, though, there are some individuals fighting to eradicate not only the disease, but the associated poverty as well. Some people need surgeries. Some people, if, if let's say they have problems with sensation under their feet, and it is permanent nerve damage, it means for the rest of their lives, they are going to need protective footwear. Someone has to pay for that. They need at least 
I mean, roughly, averagely, two changes of that footwear every year. Someone has to provide them. In the past, we used to have a, a, an orthotic auto, auto, orthopedic unit where we produced some of these things and distributed them free to some clients that needed them. Now the thing is, after eliminating the disease, integrating into the health system, that vertical funding for some of those things is not coming anymore. So you, you identify the, the, path, uh, the, the disability, the deformity, but you are not able to help the patient address that. I'm a Catholic priest. I follow the path of Christ. And Christ took care of the sick, the poor, the needy, the marginalized. That's my vocation. It's my vocation. And I thank God for the family I was brought up in. My mother loved the poor and the needy. I think she passed it on to me. And I, she's always helping people in need. She would help anybody who was in need. So she passed it on to me, and I just felt when I was ordained, this is my work. That, you know, I, I kind of see somebody suffering.